Today I've been doing one of my series on, we call it Week in Review, but basically what it is, it's entitled Church in Review. And what we do is we look at the churches that are accumulated on his channel, which is just a service that's, um, well, on the internet, that has a wide variety of different ministers and churches, and there's usually there's Sunday morning service of some type. And um, they put them on, you know, some of them are videos on demand, some of them are services that were from the previous week, some of them have a record of, you know, two or three or four or five of them. And it's such a wide variety, it always blesses me in a way, because I'm kind of neat to see, you know, the different ways that everyone, whenever they go to a church, the different ministries that there are out there that, you know, all seem to touch someone's life in some way. You know, there's like Greg Hawkins, and he's got his school of theology, you know, he's got a chalkboard up, you know, and he's teaching, you know, and there's other people like Adrian Rogers, and, and uh, gosh, John MacArthur, and Greg Laurie, and Don Stewart, even Chuck Smith, and, man, just all kinds, of, Kay Arthur, just all kinds of variety, and I like that, because, you know, it reminds me of how different we all really are, and how each one of us, in some ways, bring something different to the table. You know, God uses our experiences with each other and interaction with each other to sometimes rub off some rough edges, but also sometimes to encourage each other in ways that we hadn't thought of. You know, something that someone else might know that you don't know. That's kind of a shock, isn't it? That someone else might know something you don't know? <laughs> well, that's why I enjoy taking a week in review and grabbing a bunch of churches and throwing it out there, you know, in the ministry to give a church in review so people will begin to realize that your perspective might be a little narrow minded if you've only been to one church and you've never gone to all the other bodies of Christ that there are out there because there's a wide variety of those that do know Jesus, that walk with him and talk with him, but maybe express their faith in a different way than you do. And maybe a different way than I do. Although, i got to admit, I express my faith in a lot of varieties of ways. <laughs> Mainly grace. Oh God, have mercy. You know, but for the most part, I love that about God. That he has infinitely created creation in such a way that there's such a wide variety that he said and looked at and called it good. That I am sure that in the body of Christ, that is, we all have many members and each one's individually, separately different and distinctive from each other that a lot more people are going to wind up in heaven than they realize and that there's going to be a lot more differences than you can imagine and that I'm not a universalist but I do believe that there's a wide variety that God has called unto himself as his children and I like that I kind of get excited about that I kind of get torqued up and tweaked out and just jazzed you know as it were to find that surely God has blessed a lot of people with the knowledge of himself just by revealing his son to them and they just hung on for dear life knowing that God is saving them to the uttermost. Surely the Lord is in his place and I knew it not. Where two or more are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Lo, I am with you always even unto the end of the world. My presence shall go with you and I will give you rest. Wherewith shall I go from thy spirit, or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. Am I a God at hand, saith the Lord, and not a God afar off? Can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him, saith the Lord? Do not I fill heaven and earth, says the Lord thy God? Behold, the heaven of heavens cannot obtain, contain thee. How much less this house that I have built it for thee. Thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabits eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place, with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit, to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. You are a temple of the living God. You know, as I think about that, that ought to humble us. That ought to make us recognize who? God? You're in me? Even when I'm like blowing it and commit sin? Ick, ooey, 
God, can you do something about that? <laughs> you know, like clean me up? Because frankly, that's disgusting. And you know, it really is, because the, the concept of a holy God living in an unholy being like you and I really is pretty disgusting. But it's also pretty miraculous, don't you think? It's actually pretty phenomenal, at least as an example of mercy and grace, that we weren't consumed from the moment that he dwelt in us. Because after all, he is holy, so being in the presence of an unholy you know, temple that we are, man, I would think that, you know, these dead badger skins that we live in would be like, you know, poof, dusted. <laughs> but because he's made a habitation for us inside of ourselves, he has created this place that is holy in us. And he is making us holy so that we would become holy as he is holy. So we would become righteous as he is righteous. So we would become one in the spirit as the Father and the Son and the Spirit are one. So when you see the wide variety of believers that are out there that maybe don't see things exactly the same way you do, and yet you know they know God, maybe, it just might be that God is in them too, as well as in you. Now, isn't that a thought? God in them and in you? Huh. Imagine that.